Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Scott's Soldiers. Today may seem like a bit of deja vu. If you remember last year in episode 46, I shared with you my travels to a number of local shows to see what I could find to add to my collection. These venues included a military show, a hobby show, and a sale by some collectors looking to thin out their own holdings. Well, I went back again in 2024 and recorded for you what I saw and what I picked up. I think, and you can agree or disagree, that these local shows can be a good way to find items related to your collection, such as books, badges, uniforms, or maybe toy soldiers. They are also a way to further immerse yourself into military history, satisfy a curiosity, or just get out of the house and do something other than watching YouTube videos. Just kidding. Keep watching YouTube videos. Well, I can't say that every military type event will have vendors selling toy soldiers. I've been lucky. And so I'll keep going to my local shows in my region when time permits. Before we roll into the next part of this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's free, no charge, and it helps the channel grow. So leave a comment if you like as well. This is the Ottawa Militaria Show, which is held twice each year, April and October. There's plenty of parking, a good selection of books, clothing, badges, buttons, assorted gear, and uh, I assume experts on Militaria. At this show, there were at least three vendors selling toy soldiers and related items. I will show you the item I bought here. I also wanted to look over the tables, see if anything caught my eye, or I could add to my displays of toy soldiers. I was looking more for shoulder flashes of Canadian Army regiments, perhaps a book, or an item that I just had to have, having no idea what that could be. The item I did buy was from a gentleman selling off his King and Country Holdings. These were mint, still boxed, and were 50% off the original retail price. Well, there was a variety of World War II, World War I, and other periods available, I bought this World War II RAF Caravan number RAF083, which will go nicely with my figures you may have seen in episode 18. The second show, if you can call it that, perhaps an event is a better word, was several collectors moving some of their inventory at very reasonable prices. There was a selection of militaria, books, plastic kits, metal castings, boxed and unboxed figures and sets. The sets were a variety of Britons, Frontline, Pride of the Nation and others. Now the Britons dominated the tables. These were largely Napoleonics, bands, ceremonials, um, War Along the Nile, and other sets from the early 2000s. If you were looking for something from Britons to add to a theme that was out of production or no longer available, this may have been your chance to find that set or figure. Again, the prices were very good, as was the selection, and the Britons inventory was in mint condition. I did manage to pick up some pieces here as well. This is Britain's World War I male tank, number 08946. I had wanted to purchase one in the early 2000s, but didn't. This is a great piece and included four figures and its original shipping box. I miss that Britain's has not done more gloss figures for World War I. Now I know they did things like uh, the Sopwith Camel that I've shown you and the Charlie Biggs Premier line. These were all greatly appreciated, but I think there's still room for Britons to, I don't know, put out some more sets and figures. Again, gloss World War I. These last set of figures are by Scott Dummett and are from his Pride of the Nation line. They were intended to help fill out my existing collection of his sets. This is an officer marching of the Royal 22nd Regiment, the Van Dues, number 015. Now take a look at how Scott managed to catch the brass beaver plate on the bearskin cap of the officer. Nicely done. 
The next one is a marching Fort Henry Guardsman, number 0064, and the officer, number 0057. Like others who will remain nameless, residing in New York State, I have a weakness for the Fort Henry Guard, and these figures did look lonely. These last two are cadet squadron leaders of the Canadian Royal Military College, number 0014, which is geographically next to Fort Henry itself. Finding Royal Military College figures is not easy, so I do grab them when I can. The last event I want to share with you is the Ottawa Military Hobby Show, which brings together 19th century reenactors, militaria, toy soldier vendors, and exhibitors, used books, etc. While I restrained myself, I managed to watch others spending their dollars on items that were extremely well priced, another reason why I encourage you to attend local or regional events. Take a look at some of the items that were being sold or simply exhibited on behalf of other clubs or activities. This table was entirely Lego and from a distance you couldn't tell. Not the Lego sets I played with as a kid. These were extremely well done. Other tables had militaria of a historical nature, including uniforms and other related items. There were books, reenactors from the early 1800s, and a set of war games being played. Stop for a moment to admire this metal 1 6th World War II U.S. Army half track, which was hand built from a kit by an Ontario Model Soldier Society member. This was a real labor of love, and some of the details and additional parts were scratch built for added realism. I took some photos of this 1 6th display. The artist appeared in an OMSS YouTube video, and I'll leave you the link, but look at the details of his work, which you can purchase if you collect one-sixth figures. He's done a number of themes here. Some are related to feature films, and others are tributes to World War II pilots. The level of detail is outstanding. Last but not least, there were toy soldiers for sale. From private vendors in the local area looking to downsize or just sell off items to make space in their holdings. Sebastian from the Toy Soldier Club of Quebec City attended and were also selling. And I'll leave a link to that retailer. But take a look at the selection that you would have had. So I hope you enjoyed revisiting some local events. I'll mention it again, these shows are a good opportunity to see what's available, what prices are like in your part of the world, in your currency, and a great chance to meet other collectors and talk with them about what they're looking for. I never seem to go away empty-handed, and it helps to inform me as I get ready for the next show. As I've said before, this is a journey full of experiences and opportunities not to be squandered. So get out to that reenactment event, antique show, whatever it is, and explore. You may find something you've been looking for like I did. So until next time, keep collecting.